Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here with Switch Adapted Toys, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to adapt this Hot Wheels stunt track. Uh, this video will show you how to adapt uh, basically any of these Hot Wheels tracks that uses flywheels to launch a car. Uh, they all might have their subtle differences, but the basic concept should be the same across all of them. Um, if you like this video or if you find it helpful, make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe to stay up to date on all our latest videos. It really does help us out in a big way if you do that, so thank you in advance for doing that. If you're new to Switch Adapted Toys, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization and our mission is to make play possible for kiddos of all abilities. So a, for a child that might struggle to play with this toy normally, uh, basically they can operate the toy using an external button, which is a lot more easy for them to press. It gives them a much bigger target. It can be mounted and, and can be customized to for the child's individual needs. And it just allows them to play with a toy that they might not otherwise be able to play with. And we create these free resources and files for three printed switch buttons and, and everything switch adapted toys uh, we try to make available. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in, you can check out our website at www.switchtoys.org. All right, so enough talking, let's go ahead and get right into it. All righty, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing that we wanna do is turn the toy over and remove all the screws on the back of the toy. All right, so with those screws removed, we can now remove the back panel and set that aside. All right, so right here is where our switch is located. So we're gonna remove those two screws so that we can remove the switch. All right, so now that we have those screws removed, um, we need to drill a hole through the side of the toy so that we can get our headphone jack wire into the toy. Uh, now, these flywheels are, are kind of exposed, so I really wanna make sure that I'm not getting my wire caught up in these gears or the flywheel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually drill my hole kind of in this corner so I can kind of get my wire to come in uh, kind of behind the switch. And I think that will prevent us from kind of getting caught up in the flywheel. All right, so I've got my mono uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, definitely worth finding mono cords. Um, if you don't have any, we do sell them on our website. Uh, mono makes it so much easier than using a stereo headphone jack. Uh, so use a mono one. And I'm just gonna fish my wire through the hole that we drilled. And now what I like to do is I like to get a little bit of solder on the tips of the wires themselves. Uh, that just makes it a lot easier when I go to actually solder it to that switch. Uh, so all I'm gonna do is, is use my soldering iron to kind of heat up the wire. And then I'll bring in my solder and just try to get like a glob of solder on the end of the wire, just like that. Don't let this part intimidate you. It's really not that hard. Uh, you just want to make sure that, you know, you're not going to burn yourself or anything like that, but it's really simple to do. Don't let this intimidate you. All right. So now what we're going to do is basically use the solder that we put on the wires and get it to basically remelt and to attach it to the switch. Now, uh, when you do this, you kind of want to be quick because you can also disconnect the wires that are already on the switch. If that happens, you're just gonna have to solder them back on. It's really not that big a deal. Um, but uh, just have one wire from your headphone jack go to each of the wires on the switch. So I'm just gonna set it on top and just try to heat it up enough to melt and kind of get it to attach to that prong of the switch. You can give it a little bit of a tug and make sure that it's secured. All right, and now I can do the other one. And it doesn't take a lot to get that to melt and attach and you can kind of give it a tug make sure that it's attached just so you can see what i'm doing i, I pulled out the flywheel and i'm just going to reinstall the switch and screw it back down all right so now what we need to do is we need to prevent somebody from just pulling on this cord and, and yanking the whole thing out and disconnecting our connections so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a zip tie and i'm going to wrap it around the wire on the inside of the toy and i'm going to kind of glue it in place onto the wire 
that will kind of create like a mass that won't be able to fit through the hole that we drilled and that will prevent somebody from pulling on the cord and, and just yanking the whole thing out. I find that the smaller the zip tie, kind of the better grip it has on the wire. You don't really want to use like a big thick zip tie. And I'm just going to cinch it down as tight as I can, just leaving essentially enough slack inside the toy, but not, not any extra slack because we don't want it to get caught up in that flywheel. So I cinched it down real tight and I'm going to go ahead and cut off the extra zip tie. Now I'm going to use some CA glue or super glue and I'm just going to basically glue that zip tie to the wire just so that it doesn't slip. And if you have some, you can use some activator spray and that will essentially instantly dry that super glue. So in order to get the flywheels kind of back lined up, I just took the axle out and made sure I got everything aligned and then I slipped it back in. And then I can go ahead and replace the back cover. And we can go ahead and screw everything back down. All right, so now's the time we need to test it. So I need to put some batteries in here. All right, so I've got the toy assembled. It took a little bit of time, uh, but I, we, we need to test it and make sure that it works. Uh, but there's something I want to make sure that you're aware of. Um, there are some buttons out there that may not supply enough power to the flywheels for it to actually do the full loop. Um, Unfortunately, the switches that we make, uh, the, the wire gauge is just a little too small for it to work, but I do have a good solution for you. Uh, this is called the Tiny Switchy. Basically, it turns any standard style switch into a latch switch. So you press the button once and the, the toy will stay on until you press it again. Um, which is kind of perfect for this situation because otherwise you'd have to hold the button down the whole time and a lot of kids might struggle with that. Uh, what's nice is that this can handle that power and, and it, it does the whole loop and everything works well. Um, if you have a different style button, it might work without it, um, but honestly the Tiny Switchy is kind of perfect for this situation. So that's what I'm gonna use and I've got it plugged in and let's go ahead and test it. Now the other thing you need to know is that you kind of need to give the car a little bit of a head start for it to shoot up into the flywheels. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can kind of place it here on this ramp and it will kind of feed it into the flywheel. Um, but let's go ahead and test it make sure that it works. There we go. And, and just so you, you know, complete honesty, let's go ahead and just plug in our standard switch. I'll remove the tiny switchy and plug our switch in directly. And I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna hold my button down and we'll see what it does. So it, it just barely can't make it around, uh, which is a bummer. Uh, but with a tiny switchy, um, It'll, it'll work just fine. Uh, we do have these available on our website if you wanna pick one up. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. So that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you like it, make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe to stay up to date on all our latest videos. Uh, Switch Adapted Toys is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and our mission is to make play possible for kiddos of all abilities. We do that by creating these how-to videos and resources all about switch adapting toys, including files to 3D print your own switch button. Uh, if you want to find out more about switch adapted toys, you could do so on our website, www.switchtoys.org. And I just want to take a second and say thank you to all of our supporters. Uh, we really can't make these free resources without your support. So uh, I just want to say thank you. And if you've got a group or an organization and you want to adapt toys kind of for kids in your community, uh, you can form what we call a switch chapter. And we kind of help walk you through that process and uh, so you can provide toys to kids in your local community. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got a bunch of resources that help you do that. So if that's something that you're interested in, check out our website. 
And on our website too, there's a map where you can find where all of our Switch chapters are located at. So uh, you can check that out and kind of get plugged in that way as well. Lastly, if you're interested in a Switch Adapted toy, but doing it yourself isn't your thing, uh, we do have a online store where we sell some pre-adapted toys. We try to offer them as close to MSRP as possible so that you're not paying an arm and a leg just to have a toy for your child to play with. Um, the proceeds do help support what we're doing here, so it just helps us go into building these resources and providing them free to everybody. So if doing it yourself isn't your thing, check out our store. And again, our website is www.switchtoys.org. Well, that's pretty much it. I'm Eric with Switch Adapted Toys. We'll see you next time. Switch Adapted Toys, making play possible.